Hello all sentient beings and welcome to the Transmissions Podcast, where we talk all Hasbro, Takara, and third party... Transformers! On this episode of Transmissions, Jeremy and Yoshi are joined by Jason Kirk and Eric Cronover as we report on the third party panel from TFCon. We take a look at Hasbro's new Transformers Generations War for Cybertron figures, and Toys R Us Australia takes another step towards closing their doors. Today is Wednesday, July 18th, 2018, and this is episode 286 of Transmissions. Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that hopes we can find something to talk about this week. I'm your host, Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team, Yusuf, better known as Yoshi. Yo! And uh, Charles and Daryl were both at TFCon this week and have the night off. Fuck, they, why can't those two ever show up for work? They were a little busy not recording video for you. <laughs> and so uh, there's joining no us way, this, there's no way to walk out of this without me looking like a dick, is there? Just, <laughs> that's that's no, what you've no. established. Yeah, you, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, joining us this week, we have uh, two familiar voices from Steel City Bots. We have Eric Crownover, a.k.a. Young Daryl. Hello. And our everlasting podvocate. From Pavicacy and Radio for Cybertron now, Jason Kirk, or New Charles. So despite the fact you clearly ignored that Section 37B of my co-host contract states that I will not do a show with a millennial, I shall still do my best to persevere. I guess we're stuck with him. You, you'll note that we never co-signed that. <laughs> well, I mean, I scribbled your signatures in. That still counts, right? No. Uh, not if you admit it. Oh, I mean, uh, strike that, reverse it. As I mentioned this week, uh, Charles and Daryl have been at TFCon. Some people might know that Charles actually had to leave abruptly right before our listener meet up. And it was like, it was a family situation, but he wanted us me to let everyone know everything is fine. He's fine. He's back home. The situation is, is fine, but he wanted to make sure because... Uh, our listeners that were there for the meetup were, they went above and beyond. They helped him pack up, load his car, get him on the road. And he wanted to express his thanks. I'm sure he will again next week, but it was just like a, a very sudden situation. And uh, I don't, I don't want to invade Charles's privacy because he's totally entitled to that. I will say, and I think it's fair, but essentially his wife's car is a Decepticon. It, it, it could be yeah, very likely let it let it go with that but everything is fine and also um, afterwards daryl did go out with our listeners they had a nice dinner i haven't heard the results of their trips to the parts parties we will see if daryl actually was able to get any deals since we haven't heard anything i'm guessing not no i think he he got such good deals he doesn't have enough money to pay for his internet for the week and so <laughs> we're we just can't talk to him right now yeah. Yeah, or no one would trade with him because they won't accept poutine as payment. Well, it wasn't Canada, so they might. You never no, know. that's true. They could have. Uh, but anyway, um, I'm sure we'll have more about TFCon. Well, we got some this week. I'm sure Daryl and Charles will give us a full report next week. And uh, we do actually have some videos and some stuff. Um, the podcast panels are going to be coming up this week, and Yoshi is going to be putting together a video similar to the ones in the past. And I've already got the project laid out. I've imported the video that's been uploaded so far, but I understand there's still several gigs waiting to be uploaded. So I'm, yeah. I'm going as I can. Uh, look forward to that. Uh, and then we will move on, as we do every week, to thank our Donatrions. Uh, we have several new people on Patreon. We have JJ, Diego, and Aaron. And we're welcoming back Ellie, the donator, who had to drop off a few months ago. And glad to see Ellie back especially because we get to say donator when we say Ellie's username. Because her username has donator in it. Yes. And then uh, we also have a couple new um, PayPal donors, uh, Timothy and Kathy. So thanks a lot to all of you for supporting the show. And I am sure this has nothing to do with our five-year anniversary contest that we have coming up, where you just have to be monthly, um, like monthly donor on Patreon or PayPal by the end of July and you're automatically entered. And I think Daryl added it all up. And in total, we're giving away over $1,500 worth of stuff over five prize packs, including a masterpiece. $1,500 in Canadian or American. 
<laughs> I don't know, but it's still substantial. Okay, fine. But um, Masterpiece Megatron, Masterpiece Sunstreaker, got some Transformers movie Blu-ray, some Steelbooks, uh, Titans Return RC. Comic books up the ass. Yes. Signed comic books up the ass. Signed comic books. Um, Posters. A ton of awesome stuff. Pez dispensers, people. Yes, that, that's the most important stuff. It, to, for more information about that, go to transmissionspodcast.com slash five year. That's number five year. And also, we got new shirts. Uh, if you were at TFCon, you, you probably saw Charles and Daryl wearing them. Uh, these look like Soundwave with our logo in on the tape. Uh, and a late breaking Patreon. Uh, thanks to Chad for upping his donation on Patreon. So that is awesome fucking chad you are the shit you are you should be held up as an example for the rest of the donators yeah you got in you know right under the right at the the last moment to mention on the show you got you guys are making money in real time (laughs) thanks am i dealing with (laughs) soundboards on this fucking show are you fucking god damn it we both have to make it through this oh i think Eric, you and I will have a strange bond by the end of this. I think we already do. Well, uh, thanks again to everyone that has donated. And if you want to buy our shirts, go to transmissionspodcast.com slash store. If you are a Donatrion, there is a pinned link on our Discord that has the the Patreon exclusive store where you get 20% off. Essentially, we make nothing off of those shirts because you guys are awesome. If anybody listening to the live stream buys a shirt, let us know so we can interrupt the show to congratulate you on how awesome you are. Wherever we're at in the show, yeah, we will that, stop. I will interrupt whoever the fuck is talking to give you the attention you deserve. What if it's you talking? I'll interrupt myself. Okay. Just making sure. So uh, with all of that out of the way, uh, let's move on to some toy news. All right. Strap in, everybody, because I am going to take us through a magical journey that is the TFCon third party panel. Ooh. Not interested next. <laughs> Strapping everybody but Yoshi as I take you through. Okay. <laughs> All right. So obviously they show over like probably a couple hundred slides. I will quickly go through a batch of them. If anyone has anything to say, I will stop and then we can address them at that point And we'll just try to go from there. All right. Let's see. So uh, starting off, we have a couple things here from DX9. First would be two pieces of their um, Menasaur. They have Capone, which is their Masterpiece Motor Master, uh, Henry, which is their Masterpiece Wild Rider, and they showed off their an- Ancestrod, which is their beast form of Rodimus. Moving on, we have from New Age, uh, H1 Flipper, which is that tiny legend-scaled bumblebee, uh, Gremlin, which is a gold bug, and then Critter, which is a bug bite. Uh, X2 Toys, their um, Giga Raiden and Dark Raiden, which is their Optimus Prime and the Nemesis Prime from that same mold. And also they have Armus, uh, sorry, armor for their Sky Crusher, a.k.a. Jetfire. And real quickly, I'll also show, throw in this little section here. Jing Yang has their Winged Dragon, which is their Transmetal to Megatron. To me, two things that stick out would be uh, DX9's more components of their motor mass, of their, sorry, of their Menasaur, and a good look, or at least another good look, of the, the Beast Rodimus. Uh, personally, I'm actually not as... Seeing these pictures, I kind of care a little less about it. I don't know if there's any particular... I, d- I don't know. I just don't think I like the robot mode as much as I thought I would. Whatever beast mode it is, still kind of cool. But other than that, I don't know. And of course, Transmetal 2 Megatron is always an interesting choice as well. Uh, and maybe the Nemesis Prime version of the Dark Raiden. Uh, Eric, any of these stick out to you in any form i mean obviously the nemesis prime version of the dark radiant sticks out to me because i i certainly I like feeling. i was gonna say i certainly like black primes the armor the train bot armor for jet fire is, is it just a train that just turns into shoulder pads like is there more to it than that or am i just i was just just i'm just kind of curious as to why like <laughs> Just seems a little weird. That's a that was my question. <laughs> like if if it did something cool, like yeah, but it's just like it forms boxes around his shoulders. It's really, I mean, if you look at the slide, it shows a train <laughs> that then goes on the shoulders. I can't really. There's not much more to it. I don't think. 
weird. Well, it does say new head. So does it... Oh, so it comes with a new head for, I believe, uh, the the actual jet fire toy, because I think a lot of people were very underwhelmed. That was like the uh, biggest complaint, I think, with that toy was that the face sculpt was very poor. So essentially, they're getting you to pay extra for a new head because <laughs> they're throwing in more plastic. They're like, hey, there's also a train that turns into box shoulders. And don't forget, this is the version of Skyfire that has it is a headmaster. Yep. That's what the new head is. Which so the the Prime and the Nemesis Prime version, like the from the same line per se, those are also headmasters, correct? Like the Raiden. I don't Durkin. know that. I thought they were because I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm crazy, but I I thought they were part of the same line, and therefore they are. Maybe they aren't. Then I don't know. Yeah, I only specifically remember the Skyfire being the one that has the. Or Jetfire, whatever you want to call it, ha- being the one that has that. I do like, I, I whether he's a headmaster or not, the, the colors on that Dark Raiden. It looks like, so really, good. You know, even, though it's, even though it's yet another Optimus Prime. for a delu- And I think this is a deluxe size one, if I remember correctly, as well. You're, you're going to hear a lot of remember correctly uh, people because there's so much here. But yeah, those colors really pop up. That too. And Jason's old. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeremy, anything stick out to you real quick from this little batch? Well, first of all, I'd like to say Henry is an awesome name for a Transformer, and we don't see it used enough. Wait, is that is that what it's named, Henry? D-16 Henry. <laughs> you you have cool names like Capone, Ancestrod, and Henry. <laughs> now I want to get it, just because it's named Henry. It, it seems like, and, and kind of with the, the way that the little things po- poke out of the side, it seems like he could be wearing a hat. I'm like, he needs to be wearing a fedora or something like that. Oh my god, yes. Yes, Henry needs a fedora, absolutely. <laughs> So, um, the, the Rodimus doesn't really do anything for me either. It's not something that I was ever asking for that, uh, side swipe that they did. Yeah. That's cool. what I thought. The I don't like yes. into the bull. Rodimus as much. It just looks, eh. yeah. Well, cause the, the side swipe, you could tell it was side swipe in robot mode. This one, other than the, the head and like a few bits and the colors, you're like, you, is this some one of the Predacons? Oh, yeah, yeah. You could literally, if you just did a head swap, it would be an entirely different character. Like, there's nothing other than the head that gives it in colors that give indication that, hey, this is Hot Rod. But yeah, but um, the other one I wanted to talk about was that uh, Transmetal Megatron. Because I think we've seen some things by him before. Yeah, he came out of a couple weeks ago, the renders. But. I I don't know if I realized that the wings were going to be translucent. Oh, he's already bought um, from the second they. This thing, him. I mean, this thing looks amazing. I don't remember from the show the dragon looking so much like a a you know like a traditional Chinese dragon. But yeah, it really works for this guy. I, I really like it. Eric, do you remember the perfect effect Megatron like this? Because I know we've talked about that one before. Yeah, so the perfect effect one's like more of its own take. This one's a lot more accurate to the show. I love both. I think I actually prefer the perfect effect a bit more. I like usually when people do their own takes, but I'm getting both, so... Is is the perfect effect the one that you gotta be afraid, or you gotta be worried because it might cut you? Uh, no, that's probably the, that's probably the fan's <laughs> hobby. Yeah, they, they I, I was going to say, I have the fans many. hobby version of that, which is technically, that, I mean, I guess since that's the BotCon homage, that's the really the Transmetal 3, which is just Transmetal 2 with two heads, but you know. Right. But yeah, th- this thing looks amazing. I, I'm, I'm very looking happy forward to it. seeing it in color. Yeah, I thought I thought I might hear that from you, Jeremy. Uh, Yoshi, anything from this first little batch stick out to you at all? You know, the very first thing uh, I noticed was the Capone. Um, it just seems like that trailer is freakishly long. It does, doesn't it? It really does. Uh, but uh, my God, I'm really liking the New Age Bumblebee. I, I want that motherfucker. Can the trailer hold anyone? Can it hold the like the teammates in it or no? I bet the answer is we don't know. Yeah, we we don't. But I doubt it because it has to have all that combiner stuff in it. I bet you can fit like that might be why it's a little longer. Like you know, she said, maybe so you can fit one in there. Just because, you know, it's a it's an MP10 sized uh, bot with a trailer. You got to fit, fit a toy in there, obviously. I mean, his um, trailer's always been long, but this just seems. Wait, weird. I'm. Con- oh, yeah. The Menasaur it forms. It's like it forms a Menasaur and the other teammates are just going to go on top of the like limb skeleton. Like the, like it forms a skeleton. Yeah, that's that's what it looks like. Interesting. I'm kind of curious how that turns yeah, out. It's... That looks weird. Yeah, I'd be yeah. interested to see the, the full renders and everything. 
uh, Yoshi, that uh, Bumblebee, if you, I've heard some good things about him, so that might be something you might want to think about looking for at TFCon in Chicago when you're there, because uh, I've heard good things, even though he is tiny, like he's barely bigger than a quarter. Right. He's, there, he's a nice there, toy. There's nothing wrong with that. Barely bigger than a quarter? No. Wow. Yeah. It, if you're familiar with the old war, um, world's smallest Transformers, I mean, I don't think they were quite that small. Well, actually, yeah, they probably were about that small. And those are still fantastic figures. And this was like early 2000s. So this this Bumblebee has so much more engineering in it. Yeah. So, I mean, this is something I'm looking forward to as well. This this might be, you know, I just I, I, I don't want to I don't want to commit to anything, but this could be a, a Bumblebee gold bug dual. I want the other one. Yeah. Is, that, is that bug bite? Yeah, I like how that's his bug. name. I, yeah, I want that bug yep. bite. Mm -hmm. Well, just get all three then. We'll get the three pack. Save money, Eric. And hey, I'm fine with that. Do it. All right. See, our bond is, I was going to say, our bond is already forming. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, it's amazing and... what you can get done without a fucking soundboard. <laughs> God damn it, Yossi. Fuck you, Jeremy. DJ Ronan posted a picture here in the chat of that um, Bumblebee that turns into a, a train next to this New Age one. And yeah, Centurion come, with that, yeah. Yeah, and he comes up to the... Um, just over the, the knee. knee yeah like bare around the knee how is that that bone bee's like legends class or is it a little bigger for a legends class i cannot remember i don't have that one like i haven't seen that one i either. think it's actually a little closer to deluxe than okay legends. that's what i thought yeah. i thought it was one of the bigger ones but i wasn't totally sure yeah if i remember correctly uh i watched emgo's review earlier in the week and yeah, closer to Lux. Thank you, DJ Ron. Why does why does steampunk Bumblebee need a hammer to keep little baby Bumblebee in line? Uh, because uh, uh, what's the guy's name? John Henry. John Henry. Was in the yeah. Story. Yeah. The 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 story is from actually played into the John Henry story. Oh, I thought he just wanted to play whack a mole. That too. What it fucking looks like. It's just like <laughs> I'm gonna get you. All right, so we're gonna take things down a little bit here, and by down I mean small legends class. So we're gonna go through Magic Magic Square and Iron Factory. Uh, let's see, Magic Square showed off four figures that kind of go together, if you think about it. They have their Fire Extinguisher, which is their, these are all legend scale, their Inferno, Architect, their Grapple, Red Cannon, who is their Sideswipe, and Flame Patrol, which is just a fantastic name, which is their Red Alert. And Iron Factory came with quite a list. Uh, let's see, they have their, and this is the most metal fucking name ever, Steel <laughs> Lucifer. I want that one so bad. Yeah, which is their legend scaled Nova Prime. Uh, Mirror Commander, that's their legend-scaled Shattered Glass, War Within, Optimus slash God Jinrai. Their Catastrophe, which is their legend-scaled Baldigus slash Ruination slash R.I.D. Compatagon, Combaticons. Uh, their Shrike Feather, that's their Slipstream. I love the color. I love the colors on that one. Uh, Amethyst, their Hotlink, Rushbeat, their Jazz, Annihilator, their Red Alert. And then they showed off, uh, three of them were color prototypes. And then the last two were still, I think, just in the clay model form, perhaps. I think it's gray. I think it's an actual prototype. I don't. I don't know actually. Dino Dinobot Maximize just bought a shirt, and I think we need to stop what we're doing and acknowledge this. <laughs> oh, absolutely! Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the shirt purchase. And uh, I want a whole bunch of selfies posted online that we can share. We'll all celebrate just like this. <laughs> fuck was that that didn't even sound happy that just <laughs> no. sounded like kind of scary <laughs> it's little kids yay yeah exactly that's why it's scary <laughs> little, ki little kids are terrifying so this is their uh DJG, djg which is their tarn kaon voss helix and tesseras these are the five that combined uh yeah so that's our that's our little section if you will with magic square and iron factory uh let's see i started with uh eric before uh jeremy other than uh ruination what else you got here um your ruination is great i love the uh the steel lucifer with the nova prime yeah can we just talk about that for the next hour and a half <laughs> that i mean the, the wings look amazing on that I, I i love it oh yeah the djd i'm loving all those they look so good in color yeah and you know iron factory just continues to knock it out of the park I, uh, these are definitely going to be i i, I can guarantee uh, that tarn is on my list for tf kind see i go back and forth because now that i've seen these in color because it's like 270 bucks to get all five of them 
So I go back and forth on whether I should keep the pre-order, if I should save it for other stuff I want coming up, which let me tell you, there's some things coming up I want. If you think about it, that with that same amount of money, you would be getting like one of the Voyager Deluxe type DJD. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why I like Iron Factory. Fraction of the cost, you can get the whole team. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. As long as I know that uh, one of the things I heard about uh, their Bruticus was that it's very part formery. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of afraid we're going to get the same thing here. Um, although combiners yeah. kind of are part formers, but you say it's, like it, it was literally I think the, the entire torso was parts forming basically to get all the right, individual yes. members looking good. Well, yeah, but the individual figures are fine. And really, I'm not looking to be getting a lot of combiners in this scale. So not a not a Volcanicus situation in your mind then? <laughs> you know, the DJD don't combine. Um, but I'm looking at, you know, just some of these individual figures. And from what I have of theirs in the past, they do great stuff. And I- any of these figures would be great. Theirs don't even combine in your usual, like, four limb bots and one torso anyways. Because I believe one of them makes up both arms. And does one of them make up both legs, yeah. too? Well, like it, I be- Yeah, I th- I think that from the renders, from what it looks like, I believe that is the case. So, Yoshi, is there a more metal name than Steel Lucifer? I was on mute, everybody. <laughs> no, there is not. Whoever the fuck named these fucking things needs a raise, like, right now. Yes. Like, whoever the fuck Iron Factory contracted, hired, whatever. Like, the names, are, like, you could buy these toys based on the name. Only the name and not be disappointed on what you Yeah, mean. I mean, renaming Ruination to catastrophe catastrophe is an awesome name although it is misspelled in the other two slides maybe they just really like trophies they were like let's make a pun (laughs) but yeah i mean i agree their names here awesome all right eric anything else you need to add since you've been uh, chiming in here and there uh i'm very impressed by all of them i think this is the first time i've seen their jazz like a lot of this stuff they've they've shown off once or twice i'm very impressed with their jazz i that's just i don't i'm pretty sure they've shown it off before I got to say, I prefer um, Iron Factory's Sideswipe in Red Alert to who is the first company? Uh, yeah, Magic, Magic Square. Square. I'm with you 100%. Yeah, Magic Square is more of like, like they want to. More stylized. Well, no, I, uh, Iron Factory's is more stylized, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought you meant that Magic Squares was. Yeah, Magic Squares is more, you know, your traditional looking design. And then Iron Factory's, I, I like the direction they went with it. So, yeah. All right, cool. All right, so here, strap in, everyone, because here's the part where I start getting really excited for stuff. <laughs> All right, so moving on, we have, uh, let's see, Make make Toys fan projects yet again, revealing even more stuff. It's They just don't want to die. Non-F and Fans Hobby from Make Toys. We got a good look at their Jetfire coming up, their Buster Skywing. Uh, we got more looks at their Ryder Galact- Gal- Galacitron. G- Galcatron. Galcatron, that's what it is. Uh, I think Make Toys needs to uh, hire Iron Factory's <laughs> name yeah. or person. Uh, they also showed off a render of their upcoming Rodimus, which looks nice. Uh, and the Wise Blast, which is their masterpiece brainstorm, not in the cross dimension, but that's in their remaster. They're not as cool. Line. Exactly. Fans Project showed off their version of Ape Face. We don't have a name for it other than the fact we just know it's Ape Face. Uh, non F, we did get a shot of the Dinobot rifle pistol set. So if you. Have your Power of the Primes Dinobots, which I do not because two of them are in Wave 2 and God knows Wave 2 is impossible to find. Uh, you can go ahead and order that from Non-F and Fans Hobby. Oh my God, Fans Hobby, how much I love you. Uh, we had some pictures of uh, Power Baser, but this is their black Power Master Optimus Prime, Eric. We also got shots of their Double Evil, evil which is their Overlord. And uh, we got a shot of the trailer that came out for their Scourge and... Uh, and uh, uh, laser optimus uh more on that later in the show hint hint all right yoshi gonna start with you this time anything here other uh, i mean ape face is probably as g1 as we get anything here uh striking your fancy you know i'm kind of out of out of all the stuff you talked about i'm i'm kind of digging the trailer well i got the, good news for you then go ahead later on all right and it's you know it's just got the classic art on it so i'm, I'm just a sucker for that uh i'm digging yeah. that absolutely well one thing i'm surprised that they actually got jeff senior to do new art for this trailer i mean i'm sure they paid him playing for it well no i'm not surprised that they paid him i'm surprised that 
you know, he's using a Marvel character, Death Set, on the side of this trailer. Yeah, interesting. That, I mean, that's China. That's what I guess, but I just I I will be very surprised um, to see no no lawyers going after them. I was gonna say the double evil looks great. I, I love the double power master gimmick, and I, I yeah. too am in awe of the black power baser. Oh, I, I am. I'm also a fan of the black Optimus primes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, so Eric and I are just going to talk about power baser for the next couple hours. You two just take a little break. We'll be back. It's so good. It's so good. Especially. I like the inner robot with the blue chest and stuff like with the black. I think it looks so nice. Yeah. That's a nice touch. The, the fact they did that is really nice. I'm super impressed by Double Evil, too. I really, really was hoping we'd get colored pictures this time around, but alas, none yet. Well, but. with Power Baser, it was like they did so many different prototypes with that. Uh huh. If you get the figure, like you actually, they actually include like the history of all the different, uh, or I guess it was more on their Instagram, but they put a picture out of all the different iterations yeah. of it. I've been seeing them put multiple test shot photos out for Double Evil on their Instagram lately, too. So. Right. So I think they're I think maybe they just want to do it once or twice with double evil as opposed to doing many, many, you know, colored samples. So uh-huh. but I also love the fact that he's just enough bigger than Power Master Prime that when when the God when the Jin Rai set comes out, they'll oh, be totally they're gonna be the same height. Oh my totally god. <laughs> uh and then the trailers look good too, but we've known about those. So uh what was i gonna say i'm i'm glad that who fans projects is doing an ape face i actually kind of like the look of this one who did an ape face already one company didn't i think they were tfc toys was it i don't remember but it was like i it, i didn't care for the look of it too much and then so are we getting an alternate painted version of the cross dimensions jet fire the yeah Buster the colors are a little little not what we were expecting right i was gonna say that's a black version which right. I was I was hoping for, but we've seen photos of it. Have we just seen gray prototypes, or have we actually seen it in white and red? I thought we saw renders of it in white and red before. Oh, I'm pretty sure if the, the renders were in fact in, yeah, white and red. Also, yeah, Keith's Fantasy Club did King Re- King Gorilla, which is their ape face masterpiece ape face. Gotcha. But I gotta say, I love the uh, cross dimension, the black version of uh, Buster Skywing because. That's exactly what I wanted them to do, and I didn't. I didn't actually expect them to do it. Is it a different head, or is it the same head? I think it's the same head. It's just they. I think it has like a visor that flips down, and I think for the the white and red version, we've just seen it flip down, I believe, or it could be a different head sculpt. I don't remember. I know that the eyes. That's something new to me, at least. I think. That was on the other version, but I'm very, very happy that's getting made. It looks so freaking good. I love this line so much. Galvatron. I know some people are complaining Galvatron's over detailed, but uh, he looks perfect to me. Oh, God. 100% there for Galvatron and Rodimus. That Rodimus yeah, that Rodimus is awesome. I, that mm-hmm. Rodimus is different, and I freaking love it. So I'm I'm ready to see the prototypes of that, and I cannot wait for the alternate colored versions of that figure especially. Like I, yeah. I like to get the alternate versions of their current figures. Like I, I'm so in for this line, and that's gonna be. I can't wait for the like shattered glass or lost light colors they do of that. Who? I'm not sure, like how you can tell much from this picture. It just, if I had to only go on this picture, I'd be like, what are they doing? It, it just seems so. I don't know. Stylized. I mean, that's how. The, that's what the whole line is, though. It's their own well, stylized no, no, versions not, of the well, character. No, I'm talking about like it, it seems like they just put a bad Photoshop filter on this image, and it's hard to tell exactly what they're doing. They kind of did the same thing with the Galvatron, and I think like whenever they teased him a while ago, and I think that mm-hmm. in all honesty, it, the Galvatron looks mostly how I expected it to. So yeah, the Galvatron looks good, but I would need to see the the rodimus in plastic form before yeah that's what they've been doing is they'll tease some like concept art they've had of the care that's like usually the last panel that they do in their presentation is concept art for their their next release that they're going to like reveal so we don't get the full reveal of this yet but we will all right so we're going to do another big chunk here uh there's a couple things in here that aren't quite transformers they're more transformers adjacent so i'll probably skip right over them so uh let's see you pick it up with bad cube 
Uh, they're doing their steamroll, masterpiece sideswipe, a recon, masterpiece red alert. Because if you do a sideswipe, you got to do a red alert. And Captain Huffy, which is their black alt mode huffer. TFC Toys is getting a heck of a lot of use out of their uh, their Poseidon uh, set. They're coming out with uh, Noir, which is Nemesis Seacons. They're unactive, okay, which is version which with... It's basically a test shot. <laughs> pretty much. It's all black Seacons. <laughs> Uh, and then they are starting on their own Abominus. So we're getting Astaroth, which is Sinner Twin, and Beelzebub, another great name. Apparently, I just like names that have to do with the devil. Uh, that is their version of Ripper Snapper. So those are the only two of the uh, Terracon- yeah, Terracons that we have right now. And their ST Commander, which is their Transformers versus Joe Prime. Mass Toys, which congratulations to Mass Toys. They did get their crowdfunding uh target hit for their uh seekers so we will be That's seeing awesome. uh tetra Debt seekers so congratulations guys and of course they showed off their starscream thunder crab cracker sky war ramjet thrust dirge uh they're also gonna be coming out with what they call the tyrant throne which you can put it's Dece- it's purple so it's meant for like your decepticons although i think they also said that it would work for like uh like a grimlock and stuff and they're also teasing cybertron okay guys have fun bringing that out uh, Mayhem Mechanics did their Unrustables, so if you'd like, you can go and check out pictures of that. Again, more Transformers adjacent than anything else. Planet X, they've come out with their Vehovis, which is their Ratchet, and these are the War for Cybertron type figures, and their Mars, which is their Ironhide, except for, wait, they're changing things up. They're going IDW. They are going with Deathsaurus with their Im- is menis- Immensuous, it, I, whatever that is. I don't know. It's a word. Isminius. Is Minius. That makes a lot of sense. Not at all. And Zeta, Zeta Toys showed off uh, three of their aerial bots. Those have been out for a while, so no point going too crazy over those. And Fans Toys showed their... We finally got color picks of their Hot Rod, and they too are doing a Menosaur, so we got their Magnum, which is a Wild Rider. Spoiler, which is Breakdown. Uh, they're doing a Warpath, and they're also doing uh, Beachcomber and Brawn. Beachcomber and Brawn do not have names. All right, Jeremy. Why did I suggest Henry? <laughs> I was just, just going to say none of their Stunticons are named Henry so nobody cares so Jeremy you going to spend a ton of money on basically a black test shot for of Seacons no Shocking. Seacons have never done anything for me I, I'm not a fan of the Seacons the um, death source interests me I had a feeling um, that's where you're going to go I didn't care about the character at all until his IDW incarnation and uh, this looks pretty pretty nice he have sh- you bought any planet x stuff no okay i can totally recommend them like they're solid because i love fall of cybertron so i've gotten a couple of their things so. yeah you have Sharon because that's nemesis prime right yep <laughs> and i have some more on the way yeah. but yeah i was gonna say they're black they're black nemesis they're black uh fall of cybertron optimus was the first thing i got from them not disappointed all right anything else from this section then eric uh the okay so like as much as i just kind of like sickened by the the just the black version of this is Seacons. You like the Nemesis it? versions? No, no, no. Okay. I don't like it. I like the the Nemesis version. I like the black with the purple when you actually have a secondary color or just any, any paint. paint apps whatsoever. <laughs> it looks really really freaking good. You know, they're probably awesome. like um Toy Hacks is going to do a set of stickers. Why do we even have to bother? <laughs> you know, you're probably <laughs> yeah, not I was wrong. Like, hey, who cares? Uh, for the I'm I'm kind of interested to see how their abominus turns out. I'm kind of disappointed they didn't start off with Blot though. I feel like that would be a smart move because Blot is everyone's favorite. Yeah. And if you want if you want people to hop on the train of getting a new abominus, that's the one you release first. Get your nose saying, troll out front and center. It's like the first unique toys got a say unique toys got a lot of people to buy their abominus because they released their Blot first and it was their best one. They made Blot the best and everyone's like, look at that Blot. Yep. A Blot. There you go. The G.I. Joe Optimus Prime, there's a camo version too, isn't there? Yes. I it's I'm liking it the more I see it. I don't necessarily want it, but I saw several pictures of it at the show and I really like that. Yeah, I remember talking about that when we when we first heard about it. Mm-hmm. That's a really nice looking uh alt mode and everything. I, I love that. Yeah. I was very iffy on it, but uh, originally, but seeing it now, it looks really good. Planet X. So one interesting thing to note is that Planet X teased a little while ago uh, that they were going to be doing a new era because all they've done so far is the Cybertron game, the War for Cybertron, Fall of Cybertron, that right. stuff. Yeah. 
and Death Source is that. But the interesting thing of note is that Ironhide and Ratchet are really have been revealed after Death Source. So I think that means they are still going to continue to do characters from that era. They just have also started to branch out, so they'll have multiple. I don't know if they're it, does it have a separate line name yet? The Death Source, like I don't see anything. Okay, it's PXCO one, so it looks like it's a like an entirely new line i guess right. numbering system or whatever whereas ironhide and ratchet a lot of people were worried they weren't going to do them or do any other characters because i know they still have shockwave they still haven't done a bumblebee surprisingly right so like uh, I, it's just good to see that this means that i i i believe it means that they are still sticking with the era they've just also branching out well you've done so many of them you might as well just finish at this point exactly you like it would be it'd be kind of a crime to do like almost all of them but then quit when they're the only ones doing it also why would anyone want to do cybertron I don't know. the planet not i was gonna say not talking about a show like <laughs> talking about the, the the planet and also that's kind of funny that someone's doing so i'm i'm guessing that implies they're doing primus before they're doing a unicron which just makes me laugh <laughs> die cast <laughs> i know it's just yeah. like that makes me so happy that the first planet transformer even though you'd think it would be a Unicron is going to be a Primus from third party. That's yeah, it is. <laughs> Yoshi, can I can I interest you in a fans toys war pass so you can go around your house saying blam? No, he does that anyways. You can't. And fuck you, Eric. I want Planet Cybertron <laughs> from Mouse Toys. <laughs> I knew that was coming. This thing is so open to interpretation. Like, is this going to be a nightlight? Is it going to be a statue? Is it going to be a fucking toy? You just ro- is it a rubber kickball? I'm interested. <laughs> if it's a rubber kickball, that would actually be great. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Any one of those is a win. Awesome. Yeah, you're welcome. I really want to be, I want to be like a <laughs> soccer ball now, or basketball. You can play basketball with Cybertron. That'd be great. See, now you you realize that this shitty idea could actually be cool. Uh, no, it's not a shitty idea. It's great. I love it. All right, everyone. Thanks for hanging in. One more little section. We're going to blast through this, and then um, I'm going to stop talking. All right, so SND. Hey, they came out with a bunch of kits for stuff that you can't buy anymore. So they're Primo Vitalis to give your uh, Combiner Wars Optimus Prime. Make him IDW Optimus Prime. Good luck finding a Combiner Wars Optimus Prime. Uh, they're Primo Perfectus, eBay. which gives you a... Yeah, okay. Good luck finding one that doesn't cost $80. I think Daryl bought like half a dozen of these white Optimus Prime. Well, yeah, the white ones uh, are. They're, they're at like thirty some dollars on eBay now. The white Optimus Primes, and when that Nemesis Prime, not Nemesis, when uh, who did the the Nova Prime kit? Well, when that comes out, I'm sure that the white Battlecore Optimus price is going to skyrocket on eBay because everyone's going nuts over it. Yeah, so they have the Ultra Magnus for the white version of that mold, and then they have Nemesis Prime and the Nova Black Nova kits uh, for the the. Um black version of that mold i can't remember what that one battle no battle core is the white one i don't know. yeah it was a uh, grand scourge it was to yes. Kami's grand scourge yes it was two toy lines ago almost three at this point uh, and also there's a weapons pack for fortress maximus and um some other stuff x transpots toro which is their cliff jumper and x transpots this would all be a uh, masterpiece scale i believe uh not even gonna say that name that's a cliff jumper they have neptune for sea spray <laughs> Hey, look, everyone, it's another Springer. We need another Springer, right? No, <sighs> but this really one comes is, this, is this one for every day Maybe. of the week now? Pretty much, yeah, yeah, I think it does. Uh, okay, they're you know what? I like it for that. <laughs> you have one for every day of the week. <laughs> they're Lock, which is a cup. They're Crackdown, which is, hey, look, a breakdown. You think another Menosaur is coming? Uh, they have Wild Rider, Deb- Dead End, Drag Strip, and they have a Skids coming out. Who's named Savant? That's a good name for Skids. I'll, I, I'll accept that. Oh, and he comes with the little scooter. Yep, he does. Uh, we talked about, I don't know if it was relationship to this, but at one point we talked about the scooter with Skids. Like the real the real car came with the scooter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you had one of your, one of our, your, your fantastic listeners actually wrote in yeah. and explained that all, which was great. Wait, the car, like in real life, that yeah. car yes. came with Yeah, the, the real life yeah. car that Skids is based off of came with that scooter. Why doesn't every car come <laughs> with a scooter? I know. That's a big, that's a good <laughs> question. <laughs> and KFC Toys, uh, uh dump yard was a junkie on and then they're gonna have four different kinds of junkie on so you can you can troop build your masterpiece junkie ons who needs money money isn't important uh they're also coming out with jet one and jet two which is dreadwind and darkwing hopefully they combine better than the power of the primes versions do toy world is giving us an mp scaled galvatron 
Uh, they're also coming out with a Jazz, although I think we knew about that one. And look, they have a Motor Master. So many Menasaurs. But surely that's... Oh, wait, they're doing Onslaught too. So Bruticus coming from Toy World. Watch for it. Uh, Giga Power is giving us a Grimlock. And finally, we finish up with Mastermind Creations. Uh, they have a shot of their Tortor, which is their Tesserus. Uh, they have Erebus, which is their IDW Guzzle. And they, too, are tackling IDW Deathsaurus with D-Z-E-F. So d I guess. Uh, they're also sure going to be doing it. A- Yes, a Diatlas, and they also have their own version of Bruticus, and not on the rundown because it wasn't in the slides, but it definitely needs to mention this is the thing that most impressed me from this weekend at TFCon. MMC is doing Masterpiece Skylinks. Oh my god. I know, I'm surprised. This is going to cost all the money. Uh, Eric, how much all the money is this going to cost? More money than you make, probably. Like so much, so much money. Is Skylink's masterpiece, or is he part of the reformatted line? I don't remember. Oh uh, well, it does say reformatted, so right, that's more Chug scale. So, I was gonna say that's technically Chug, but that's still a really big Skylink's either way. It is, and that was forgive me. It's just everyone who took pictures of it starting on Friday night was saying, "Hey, look, it's masterpiece Skylink's," which is as close as we're gonna get to a masterpiece Skylink's. I'm sure. Um, plus, if it was masterpiece scale, like it wouldn't even fit in that display case. It would have to be at least three times that size, probably. Yeah. But no, chug scale Skylinks. I, I I will cancel every pre order I have for the next year to get this thing. Um, He's running saying he is big. So, oh yeah, he's man. reformatted. Yeah, he's big. It, there, there's I'm no doubt. Curious how it compares compares to their biggest reformatted. Their uh carnifex was he was part of the reformatted line right i have carnifex yes, Carn- like, like, is yep so that's the biggest reformatted figure they've done so far i believe so i'm curious how this stacks up to that in terms of actual size and stuff we'll have to see yeah and uh dinobots mentioning in the chat that he heard it might be sold as two parts i've heard that too not confirmed as far as i know yeah it makes more sense than omega supreme being sold as two parts in my sure does. opinion um anything else from that little section there eric Man, that obese Galvatron looks obese. He didn't from... miss a uh, peck day, that's for sure. That dude's got some shoulders. Toy World. God, that is a fat Galvatron. Why are you doing a bad Galvatron after quit, we've already gotten several body shaming? <laughs> <laughs> I've but lost like, weight. I'm allowed to now. But why? But like, why would you? I mean, I guess, you know, the development cycle, we have no idea what it is on like this specific company or whatever. But like, we've already gotten several Galvatrons at least one of which has to be good to anybody. So like, why you got to make a bad one in my, in my opinion, I guess, the, but like the open just, and play Galvatron is perfect for a masterpiece Galvatron. It costs 60 bucks, but uh, I just do not, I do not like that fat Galvatron. There, there is a hole in the market for people that want a bad Galvatron. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, I don't want any of these Galvatrons that actually fill a specific like desire or like, you know, they have a place in my collection. I need this bad one to just <laughs> it, it needs to be, to be displayed on its own. To be fair, I know of someone who would say that the fans toys Galvatron is a bad Galvatron. But there's still already several of them. So that's like even if you don't like one, I'm pretty sure you can at least like one of the others. Um I also do like seeing another DJD member in color. I think that's about all I have to say in terms of I, I'm excited that they have another team member. Who? Sure. Which one is that? I, I get the two mixed up, Tesseris and Helix. Helix. Everyone does. Everyone does. Which like, one is know. in color? It's the it's the one with like the shreddy chest thingy. He's like tan and red. I think those Tesseris. Is that shreddy Tesseris? Chest, yes. Sh- shreddy chest guy is the one. Exactly. <laughs> shreddy chest guy. Yoshi, are you going to buy 18 third party Menosaurs? Absolutely. fucking lootly not <laughs> i i very well may be by uh kfc's uh fucking um shit the junkions yeah yeah yeah. the junkions look sexy which well, one man. there's four well i i was just told <laughs> by jason they're mix and match so i have to get them all there oh, you go man. true build baby fucking a yeah the... what what about that sea spray mastermind and neptune Oh, don't sorry, X Transpots. Do we only have sea sprays? Oh, there's sea so, sprays, sure. <clears throat> I'm looking for it. Uh, sorry, it's picture 356. I mean, sea spray. 
Yeah, That's I mean, interesting. How many interesting how many different color. ways can you make them transform? I you know what I'm kind of completely satiated with uh, Hasbro's late last release for Sea Spray. I'm I'm good. This guy, you know, he's got a he's got an interesting stance and an interesting color. I'm gonna go with no, Jeremy. And finally, Jeremy, you're gonna have the last word, and it better not be a long one because otherwise people are gonna get upset that we've been talking about this for so long. So pressure's on you. I'm out. All right. Um, Skids looks great cup good robot mode there's no detail on that vehicle mode so no hope they do some work there <laughs> yeah i do love That's that robot it. mode so yeah all right um everyone thanks for sticking through us i mean this is what happens with the third party panel there's a lot to go over and you know a lot of the stuff is old but i don't think we knew there was this many menasaurs slash bruticuses coming out i mean we knew about more than half of them probably but it is, it is, there's a lot so uh, let's see uh, who's on next. <laughs> the rundown. That's the thing. Eric, what do you got for us? So I have a rumor about possible Takaratomi movie uh, masterpiece in studio series. And I, oh yeah. And also Bumblebee movie toy listings. So the toy listings we have uh, have MPM six and movie masterpiece seven, both as unknown. Whereas we know them actually six is Ironhide seven We've only seen the alt mode, not the robot mode, of it, uh, like a test shot of it, but it's the Bumblebee from the Bumblebee movie. So it seems as if the movie masterpiece uh, figures we're going to be getting next. I'm trying to, the article I'm reading, I don't think has them labeled. Uh, but I th- I believe from what I saw, they were there's Jazz, Megatron, and Starscream, I think are the rumored ones to come next. Uh, so I'm excited for those. I'm kind of curious what movie masterpiece Megatron's going to be like, because movie masterpiece prime is pretty big. He's not too expensive, but, uh, he's pretty big. So I'm kind of curious how big movie masterpiece Megatron's going to be. If it's based off his first appearance, like all of the movie masterpiece have been so far, let's see what else is there. Oh, then there's, uh, two there's the two figures for the bumblebee movie uh basically confirming optimus prime is going to be in the movie and then also it's an optimus prime and a bumblebee figure which surprise we're getting a bumblebee figure for the bumblebee movie but um the optimus prime i'm kind of curious like not necessarily about the toy but what do you think his design for this movie is going to look like seeing bumblebee and starscream like how do you think they're gonna do optimus prime is like what i'm curious about I don't I'm know. thinking it's either going to be a Cybertronian looking Optimus Prime mm-hmm. better than what I will be talking about in a few minutes. Um, <laughs> but also the other way is they could give us uh, another take on the, you know, the traditional eighties looking Optimus Prime. Uh, that's, that's my Maybe guess. remold what they did for um, age of extinction. Like the evasion mode. Yeah. I'm curious. I like what I'm imagining. It's like something that would be like evasion mode Optimus but almost switched where he has like a G1 looking robot mode, but a Cybertronian alt mode since I don't think he's on earth if there's continuity, but that's a big if so. Well, there's no continuity, but I I think from everything I've heard, it's probably going to be like flashbacks. Oh yeah. As you say, flashback or like a hollow, maybe he sends a hologram. He just FaceTimes Bumblebee like, Hey man, how's, how's earth? I didn't get your postcard yet, Bumblebee. Are you going to send it or what? There's a flaw in your logic, Eric, seeing as how Bumblebee can't fucking talk. He can be We're hoping. He can... Bzz, 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 and, oh, no, he can He can talk through... Uh, he can talk through uh, memes now because the never going to give you up, you know? Well, I guess it's not a meme. That's just no. A, but uh, yeah. <laughs> he can talk through the... He's going to learn to talk through the radio in this. Um, but then studio series, we have listings for another ratchet, which would almost certainly be dark of the moon, or it's a reissue of the first one, but I would just guess they're like, Hey, let's make more money and just make it green. Uh, Ironhide, who we've now seen Bumblebee, who we've already gotten the old, older Camaro from the first movie. So I'm curious if this will just be normal Bumblebee from the first movie or what? And then Starscream, which is... It it was rumored to be Revenge of the Fallen Deco. It is now confirmed as of today. Actually, Hasbro Pulse, I think it was today. Hasbro Pulse yeah. released actual official images, which it's the movie. It's it's just the Studio Series Starscream 
with the alternate uh, saw accessory and then the Revenge of the Fallen deco, which I like a lot more than I thought it would. And this might make you feel old, but I'm pretty sure it's for nostalgic reasons because as a kid, that Voyager, I had the Revenge of the Fallen Voyager and that was my Starscream. And I was, I really, really like that. So I was very surprised by how much I actually really liked that version seeing it revealed. So I'm, I'm actually super excited for that. So does my nostalgia for a Revenge of the Fallen figure make you feel old or no? You need to start a show on our network <laughs> talking about this crap. About uh, being young? Yeah, yeah and, well, you, and you can't refer to something as, like, when you were a kid because you still are a kid. I mean, I uh-huh. I am. <laughs> Technic- um, technically, I'm not, but yes, in reality, I definitely am. I meant as a little kid. I am now yeah taller than jason big kid not that that's hard you're now allowed to ride the big boy rides at disneyland (laughs) (laughs) actually judging from how tall he is he was able to do that like age 12 this is true eric's a tall guy it's kind of scary or are you just a short guy jason well that's true too exactly but yeah that's about it for my news item i think i picked the least uh, eventful one yeah well we got we've had a, a lot of stuff yoshi what do you got this week well, uh, th- because of our nostalgia love, we just have to keep talking about uh, Toys R Us and uh, their uh, dying existence in Australia. Uh, essentially, we're seeing almost the same kind of same kind of rundown as we saw in the U.S. Uh, they have bumped up their in-store sale prices from to thirty to fifty percent off store wide. Uh, shockingly, it seems like they've kept their website open uh, enough to let you know that you cannot buy anything at these discounts off their website. <laughs> it, it just seems to be showing us how come they failed in their business strategies. Well, I think the website store is one of the first things to get disabled. Well, it, the store was disabled right away in the U S like they're still allowing purchases in oh. Australia's, uh, the interesting, uh, interesting move. Um, take your screenshots for nostalgia reasons in the future. And yeah, that's what I got, Jeremy. What are you going to close us out with? Oh, I'm sorry. Do you guys have anything to say about Toys R Us Australia, Jason? Yeah, it's it, it's it is very sad. It really is. I just at this point, I kind of wish. Uh, I'm so tired of hearing about it. not because I can't believe people are talking about it. But like I just want it. It just it just needs it just it just needs to be tonight. done with. Like there, it's being drawn out so much. I mean, I feel I felt like it was just we knew Toys R Us Australia was just they were absolutely done when. What was it? The black version of uh, Masterpiece Cheetor when they basically told everyone, yeah, you know how you pre-ordered this? Well, we're not going to have it. And since we have no money, you can't have your money back. But your bank might give it to you. It's like your bank might give it to you. But like as the official stance of the company is we can't give you money back. I feel like that says everything you need to know about them at that point. Yeah. Like it was it was over from that moment. So. Yeah, I'm with you, Jason. It just it, Toys R Us. I like. I, it's so sad, but like, please, just it just needs to end. And it li- it lives on with our Canadian brethren. Brethren. So and I was about to say, if TFCon was smart, they would partner up their Canadian conventions with Toys R Us and try to do something like maybe have a a small, you know, Toys R Us booth where you know you're getting all these people from the U.S. coming in. You remember Toys R Us? We're still up here. <laughs> yeah, like go. we actually exist in this land. Yeah. You you realize with the way things have been going, Jeremy, and you've you've been paying attention to the news like I have, like right behind that booth would be the KB booth. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I will finish up with um we got some official news this week. Um the first thing from that known uh toy reporting resource gameinformer.com they got an exclusive of the new uh war for cybertron figures with uh we were correct in assuming that the the whole gimmick was called siege mm-hmm. um and we have some siege battle masters uh we have an optimus prime a um sideswipe and then this little guy called fire drive that is essentially a target master he turns into a gun um he has some removable little flames that can look like the gun's firing or he can the flames can also attach to like optimus's axe and um they're they're gonna gonna be lost within five minutes that'd be even better (laughs) (laughs) 
this is Optimus after he ate Chipotle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, what I would really hope is that the little target master guy can turn into a jetpack for sideswipe. Cause I think that would be cool. Oh, that would be cool. Oh, but, wow. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. yeah. Because he, one of the modes that they have a picture of here is um, kind of a jetpack looking thing. I just don't know if you'd be able to attach it to sideswipe. Yeah. It, you can totally do anything if- with a hot glue gun, motherfucker. Well, yeah. I was just going to say, I, I thought you were going to say drilling a hole in his back. You know, either works because he's five millimeter compatible, the target master. So, right. But um, the little flames are going to be lost within five minutes, I'm sure. We were so worried about that with headmasters, but that didn't really seem to be a big problem with the Titan Masters. But these, oh my, they will go missing instantly. Yeah, I mean, well, in general, the Titan Masters are attached to something and it's a pretty secure attachment. These, I bet, would just pop off really easily. Are they going to be made? I'm, I'm assuming these are probably going to be soft plastic, which will only make the connection. Oh, Lord. Yeah, probably. Another problem I have with this whole line is War for Cybertron. I'm expecting Cybertronian modes. The Sideswipe is generic car. Yep. Which, okay, but you don't really look like you're, you know, a battle-ready vehicle. But Optimus. he's got battle damage, Jeremy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's a little dirty. <laughs> yeah. Optimus, though is the earth mode optimus with a few extra headlights yeah really yeah gosh it honestly just looks like they took power of the primes optimus scaled it down to voyager size gave them new accessories and then just modified the alt mode and a much better truck mode yeah well yeah i mean it's not that i'm just saying that it looks so much g1 prime just like the last figure we just got that they right you could mistake them, honestly, if you were just casually looking through things and not, you know, just the their general aesthetic is very similar and not very Cybertron- Cybertronian. Right. I mean, there's so many little things you could do to that alt mode just to make it look a little bit more alien. And, and they didn't. Th- there's no reason for it to have like a grill in the front like this. Well, see, I mean, Striker Man is from uh, Make Toys uh, Cross Dimension. That's a perfect example of what um a cybertronian truck mode would look like I think. or there's also the war for cybertron fall of cybertron designs but those are different i mean they're they were far yeah. they were a, a pretty far move take but that's still hey at least that's cybertronian unlike right. this yeah i mean they have so many things that they could go to just with their own history yoshi do you have any comments on these nope nope <laughs> all right <laughs> we also have um a ton of leaked via amazon listings leaked figures and with san diego comic-con next week i'm sure there's going to be a ton more um confirmations from this but i'm going to just run down a few of these um xv from t formers did a really good post summarizing everything so yes that's um, very helpful yeah, yeah so most like pretty much all these image or all these links on amazon do not have images uh, but we have like an under 10 class that has Transformers Rockhounds action figure and Aces action figure. I'm wondering if that's going to be these little um, Target Master guys. I would. Well, guess. With that under 10. Yeah. Um, and then on $10, we, we're going to get a Megatron Starscream Bumblebee, another Megatron with a different number and Prowl. I think those are Cyberverse. Yeah, I would think. Um, I'm interested to see when we're getting two different Megatrons. Hopefully it's not a typo and we are getting two different. At the $15, which I think is the new price point for Legends, we're going to get a Soundwave, Hot Rod, Stingray, and Infantry, which seems like it'll be a kind of a generic. I'm curious. So, like, the Soundwave and Hot Rod are definitely Cyberverse, but the Stingray and Infantry, yeah. could that be another price point in War for Cybertron? Because we know, like, yeah, the, like, be, yeah. so, like, Target Masters are replacing Titan, like, you know, Prime Master, Titan Master, that price point. Could these be the, like, Legends class ish? But, uh, well, that's what I'm thinking. But a little more. I, I mean, mean, they're modified since they're $15, unless Legends class well, costs $15 now. Well, well, well the, the, the prices are going the deluxes, up. Yeah, the deluxes are now 20 Yeah. Although that was supposed to happen with uh, the, the Terracons, but Walmart still has them for, like, 15 16 So, 16 bucks. I think go quite a, up quite as fast as they said, but I But they would will they will for this line because they did for Studio Series and since stu- this Studio Series oh, yeah. is a yeah. brand new True. line, this is a brand new line, so 
they they tried sure. to soften the blow with Power of the Primes, and apparently just some retailers were like, no, we don't care. They they will with the new line. Yeah, pretty though. much. Yeah. Uh, in, in the $20, and some of these names are, are kind of, they're fakes. Like Stingrays and Inventory are going to be yeah. something official. Mm-hmm. $20, we got Deluxe Cog, Deluxe Hound, Ironhide, Prowl, Sideswipe, and Six Gun, which is an interesting name. I'm a, I'm hoping that's not a fake name. I mean, Six Gun and Cog are rumored to be like uh, basically just really, really long awaited upgrades to Metroplex and Fort Max, is what I think XV was speculating. I feel like those are, for at the twenty dollar price point. W- so like deluxes, like like they're not literal upgrades, but they're like you know. Like oh. they're deluxe type figures that are I, I I think he's implying that he thinks are meant to I was hoping six gun would be like a you know six changer or you know, so we can get another submarine figure. Yeah. <laughs> well, um we also have Nitro Blue, Green Jackets, Wood Ducks, Dino, Barricade, Red Lightning, Crankcase, High Tower, and Drift. Crankcase, so Crankcase <laughs> is definitely a studio series. Drift yeah. we don't know. That could go either way easily. Uh, Barricades, definitely studio series. Dino, which is the first, this will be the first new mold of Dino, I think. Oh, ever. I forgot Dino was in The Last Night. That's not a fake name. And Nitro Blue is probably also. I don't know who Nitro Blue is. I'm Green Jackets, Nitro. my guess for Green Jackets is that's a code name for Crosshairs, but that's totally just a guess. Could I be. just feel like that would be a good one. Um, one thing to note is that the side swipe that's listed under these $20 listings that has a different product number than the Sideswipe for uh, War for Cybertron that was revealed by Game Informer. So whether okay. that's like a repaint or if that could be Studio Series, I don't know. But I just thought it was interesting to note that like they have two different numbers. So I don't know. I, I agree with XV. It's going to be Jeremy's G2 side. I think that's a great thing. I think that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder if it's Studio Series, though, only because we're going to get a Studio Series Sideswipe. Just who knows? Like, yeah, that's true too. So I, I like that. Yeah. Either way, it's a win for me because I want both. But I would really like a G two side swipe. So here's hoping. All right. Yeah, and let's run through the rest. Uh, Thirty dollars. We have an Optimus Prime, Megatron, Starscream, Thundercracker, Springer, and Bumblebee. Um, I'm thinking the Bumblebee at this price point is Studio Series. I was thinking it was a Bumblebee movie toy separate. Or, yeah, or movie, yeah, just movie, some, something, something yeah. not War for yeah. Cybertron, and then the others, your traditional kind of Voyager, you know, cast we have here. Although interesting, we get a Springer. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'll also be interested and, to see what they do with Megatron because the last one we got at uh, that price point was the Triple Changer. Um, I if we get a really good Megatron out of this, I might be interested. I could be interested in maybe getting rid of the. I like that mold, but like a solid, just you know. Big big ass tank Megatron. I, I'd be down yeah. for it. And at the fifty dollars, we have Ultra Magnus, Optimus Prime, Megatron, Shockwave, Jetfire, and Optimus. Uh, I would expect the Shockwave is probably going to go along with what they're doing with Cyberverse. Oh, I was thinking. I think that, that no, kind there, of style. there isn't a fifty dollar price point for Cyberverse. Thirty is the high, highest they go. I I believe. Isn't no, it? I, I know, I'm saying I'm saying the design of Shockwave. Oh, I'm thinking is probably going to follow that. I'm thinking look. it's Studio Series. I'm guessing that in Jetfire Studio yeah. Series, but I don't know. I I try to forget that <laughs> Shockwave is ever in the movies. <laughs> I mean, size wise, that makes sense. Also, I'm I cannot wait to see what they're doing with this Ultra Magnus. I know, same. Because um, after that last one we got, that's a heck of a mold that they did a pretty good job turning into Power Master Prime. But I cannot wait to see it. I mean, they've already gotten Super IDW, so we might just get a really good one. I mean, it, it says War for Cy- Cybertron, but, you know, it'll be a G run representation. So uh, and the last thing I have here is um, it's currently unavailable. But if you were able to get it, Power of the Punch or Power of the Primes, Punch Counter Punch was available on Amazon.com. We'll have a link here to it. Um I'm sure it'll come back and leave as things do on Amazon. But this, we we speculated before that this was a remold of an existing figure, but this is an all new mold with the dual, you know, punch counter punch, like dual robot modes. And I think this looks really, really cool. It's amazing. And you also get, 
it, and this is a, a Prime Master thing. So you get Prima Prime, which has got some translucent plastic. Uh, it looks really neat. And I was not expecting this to be a new mold. A lot of people are suspecting this is like a pre-tool for a War for Cybertron figure, which I I wouldn't doubt. Point blank. Uh, point blank. Or I've yeah. seen some compelling digibashes of Drift and Deadlock that I would I would personally really like that one. Oh, I'd love oh, that, that too. That cool. was a nice I digibash. I love yeah. that so much. I think Mac Tackle I, did that I one believe on Twitter, so, yeah. so look him up. Mm-hmm. He's cool. <laughs> uh, I don't... Well, I don't really like the face on either, but... I will say the face on. I'm scared that the head is just going to be two faces molded back to back, which I feel like would kind of ruin the effect for me if there isn't something that like slides over mm-hmm. it. Like a face on the back yeah. of your head is that's a pretty dead giveaway that yeah. like the whole shifting your entire robot mode kind of just ruined gets ruined if your face is just on the back of another face. And that's where we get a third party to do two heads because it's better than <laughs> one. Oh. I don't hate it, Jeremy. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's what you're going to get from me. I High praise. I praise. All right. Cool. Well, um, that is all of our toy news this week. It was significantly longer than normal, thanks to the third-party news. But this week and next week, it's going to be like that with TFCon and then SDCC next week. I blame I blame Eric. So send all your mail to Daryl at transmissionspodcast.com. <laughs> yes. All right. Let's move on to trips to the store. And this is the part of the show where we show everything that we got this week. It is done as a a YouTube. It's done as a a recording on YouTube. And also we put the audio right here in the audio podcast. So without further ado, trips to the store. Yoshi, what do you got this week? Me? Me? All right, so you guys know Walmart has the reissues coming out, in particularly Starscream. Not something you can get yet, so check this out. You don't have to wait. You can go to Hallmark and get the ornament, and it's way awesome. It's way fucking awesome. I I completely forgot about that until today. You you guys, at least Jeremy knows, I'm obsessed with these. Uh, I've got the whole collection. We Uh, know. Every year, they have managed... Uh, like clockwork to fuck up the logos all the time. Now they're just using the current Transformers art. The, what was it? One year they had Grimlock, but they had the Decepticon colored logo. Like I just yeah. these fucking clowns, man. Fucking clowns. There, there's no quality control on the art. Really? And I, I don't, and I am one of those people. I have tried to contact Hallmark. I have tried to contact the designer that did this. Uh, and none of them ever respond to me. So, um, <laughs> just wonder look, if, if Hallmark is an American institution, these guys have a reputation for making the best shit. And if they can't get the fucking logo, right, what, what, what can we expect from Walmart and their fucking reissues? All I have to say is thank you. <laughs> <laughs> how was the actual, how does the actual ornament look? That is a fantastic question. Let's open this for the first time live. <laughs> live unboxing. Live unboxing. I don't know if there has been an unboxing of this this year's ornament on YouTube. So this is the first. Oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> it's off See, to a great start. Already. Already. <laughs> when when uh, the previous uh, ones of these had come out, the, uh, the plastic protector would clip together. These have no clips on them. I did catch them. cutting. Motherfuckers. Isn't that right? Look at this bitch. Beautiful. I don't even have to apply stickers on it. That is nice. <laughs> I'm surprised Repo Labels doesn't come out with something for these. <laughs> that it looks might. great. Uh, that you is... just put the bug in their ear, that's for sure. Yeah, that is your G1 star. This screen. is uh, uh, shockingly uh, detailed, much like uh, I think it was Soundwave was last year's. This is, mm-hmm. uh, this is really good. Um, like the Optimus Prime one, which is the first one and is the most sought off for one, to me is the biggest piece of shit because you can't just stand him. He's yeah, got he's the at, box he's pose angle, with like his legs box. all yeah. messed up. Um, Grimlock's fine. Megatron's okay. Uh, but Soundwave in this one, just having touched this for two seconds, is really good. There's a lot of quality there. Awesome. Well, Megatron's got his trigger dick, so that's a thing. Right. <laughs> he's... Oh, he's, he's uh anatomically trigger dick correct <laughs> but uh you know they this have to get it from behind the counter when you order it 
This is the first uh, Hallmark figure. I'll quit talking after this, but this is the first Hallmark figure I've touched where I thought I can actually turn the wings, but you can't, or you can open up the cockpit, but you can't. It's uh, it's very, it's illusionary in that respects. It definitely, I don't know. It harkens to that feeling of Christmas when these guys came out. Awesome. Nice. So fuck you, Walmart. All right. uh, Next, Eric, you got anything to talk about? So I was gifted something recently that I didn't even know existed. It was a pair of Transformers boxers that were actually using co- art from the 80s comics. Oh, I, I was very so- see this. I was I didn't know this existed. They were just brought home and they were like, "Hey, we got something you'd like." And I was like, "What?" And they just showed it to me. I was I was just I was honestly more confused than anything. I was like, why do I want 80s Transformer comics on my underwear? And I was Why like, do you no, not? Why? And then yeah, I was like, I no. That, and then that is the next question I asked me. And I was like, well, why not? You know, like, I guess then that's fine. They're really colorful. They're really wacky. And I, I like them. It's just, I was very shocked to see those. I didn't, I, those flew under my radar, apparently, in terms of existing. So I, I now speak, own them, though. I speak for everyone when I say thank you for not showing us. Yes. Yeah. I you know yeah. I thought about it but no <laughs> yeah and, and if you've listened to our la- latest declassified episode that came out last week and is available to everyone to listen to y- Yoshi won't be getting them because they're not boxer briefs yeah <laughs> all right I'm gonna go next um, I this is a comic catch up week I've gotten a ton starting off of. In no particular order, because that's that's way my stack is, and they are not bagged and boarded. <laughs> um, Unicron oh, number one. This is the retail cover. Um, I I desperately wanted the Sarah Petra Duroche cover, and my store did not have it. Mine did. Oh, ah. <laughs> I want that. I want that cover. Walked right past it. Oh. Yeah. L- Lost Light number nineteen. Uh, Nick Roach, good guys cover. Um. As you remember, he did another cover with the um, the bad guys. I, I would say Decepticons, but they aren't. They're also awesome here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have what we will be talking about on alt mode this week, the Bumblebee movie prequel cover or comic. And this is this is cover A, which I believe is Andrew Griffith. Uh, let me double check. It is. Andrew yeah. Griffith, Priscilla Tramontano. And I mean, a- as you can tell from the cover, this is the in the the style of a '60s Bond movie, and we'll we'll talk about it on alt mode. And I have Optimus Prime, number twenty. I got the um, this is a Kazama cover. It's got the Beast Wars Megatron and Optimus Primal, Josh Burcham on co- on colors, but I also got the one with just the Kazama line art because I love nice. this image so much. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. And then to top it all off, I have Lost Light number 20. Uh, this is Getaway and Rodimus facing off. If only they had been bagged and boarded, right, Yoshi? That's exactly what I'm fucking saying. Every <laughs> week I tell you fuckers to put bags and boards in that shit. Okay. <laughs> Don't okay me. <laughs> all right. Well, the next thing I have is... um we we have had these guys on our show before. They have an awesome podcast called the Autopod Decepticast or the Autopod Decepticast, and they go through the live or the original '86 movie, and they are a lot of fun. We have been on their show. They've been on our show, and I got this little care package from them. Uh, this is for their supporters. Uh, they are really up, upping this uh, podcast swag game. We we need to get on it. They got this nice letter on um, pretty high quality paper stock Yoshi. Like there there's a, a clear watermark on here. This is nice feeling paper. It's got these um, thick cards. I don't know if there's meant to be coasters or whatnot, but they're they're really thick. You got Lithonian space wizards, and all of these have a logo on the back, so you know it's an official merchandise of their podcast. I got two of these. It says, you can see everything from Dickhead Mountain. <laughs> Great art. Great art. 
Huh. Yeah, I, the, the art on these is fantastic. And this one is my favorite. Uh, this is Shockwave sitting in a, a pool. Unicron's coming. And I just, I, I love that one. And the Next last time you have thing, a bad day, just post that on Twitter. You like my mood today. Right. And the last thing, this is something we saw on uh, from Retcon. They had displayed and it was done by the Autopod Decepticast guys. And I have a cup. I want you for the Autobot Army poster. Ooh, that's really good. What that is, did you yeah. do to get all of this shit? I think these were meant for the supporters of their podcast, but Daryl and I were like, hey, we really like that poster. And they're like, oh, hey, you're cool. We'll hook you up. Well, that was nice. Accurate. That was that was like, I mean, they, they have a fantastic podcast. I didn't now. know they were a charity podcast, but apparently <laughs> they, they're an awesome podcast. And this is going up on the wall behind me as soon as I get a, a frame for it. I believe this is actually I don't know if it's U.S. paper size. It might be A4. I don't know. It is fantastic, though. Well, as someone who might know a little something about doing a minute by minute movie or podcast about a movie, I fully support my brethren over at the Autobot Decepticast. They are a good bunch of guys who forgot half of our podcast. <laughs> I don't know if they forgot. I was just about to say, did they forget? <laughs> or, or was Daryl really on the ball and getting a couple of stuff? All right. Uh, to wrap it up, Jason, what do you got this week? You have actual right. toys? Yes. Now, actually, the last couple of times I've been on, I've shown off a ton of third party stuff. Not a problem this time. Of course, they had me on after TFCon DC last time. What did you expect me to do? I had all kinds of stuff. So just a few things. Uh, first, let's start with the first figure I was able to find in a local store in like two months, because as most of you probably know, Wave 2 of Power of the Primes basically didn't exist. And then Wave 1 started showing up again, but I was able to get a hold of Inferno, which is the Wave 3 Voyager. And I never got the hot spot from Combiner Wars. I just went straight for Onslaught for Bruticus. So this is my first take on this this uh, version the of the mold. Truck. The fire truck, yeah. And I really like him. And I hope that Toy Hacks does do a set to either make him Heat Wave, or I will take, uh, obviously, R.I.D. Optimus Prime. So that would be a superior pretty- design. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I I don't know. I have a special place in my heart for a heat wave watching rescue boss with my son. But yeah, I think as a prime, that would look pretty darn good. Also, uh, if you were on the ball la- two weeks ago, you would have been able to get on Amazon and order their exclusive, which is the nemesis prime, which is the, yeah, the nemesis prime version of the power of the primes, a uh, leader class optimus, uh, nice. great toy. That leader, cra- that leader class Optimus is great. This is also, the head sculpt's a little different. Try to close in on there a little bit. It's like the Toxitron uh, one that the Collector's Club used. It's the same general design, which was yeah, an alternate. A, it was an alternate head right. sculpt done by Hasbro to begin with. So, Right. And it's not exactly it, right? But it's close. No, it's I mean, because that one's like tiny because it's on the Combiner Wars Optimus mold. But it, it is the same right. general aesthetic. The style. Yeah, as yeah. you say, that's what they were yeah. going for. And the the big guns on the shoulders are also different, right? From the power or from the regular one. Yeah, the guns are the, not the included with Prime. Uh, the sword is not included with Prime, and this is a little arms micron guy that was not included with Prime. The only thing that matches is the gun, which I actually have attached to his because mm-hmm. his fists are in the back, so he can hold his gun. And then when Nemesis he... Pax has a new head too, right? Nemesis Pax does have a new head as well, which I won't show right now, but. Yeah, but so it has a, a horned mohawk. It's so cool. <laughs> and, and yeah, it's nice. It, it, find one and get one and look I at it. You don't, if my, you don't have one. Mine's on the way. Oh, there you go. Ah, beat you. <laughs> uh, Yoshi, close your eyes because this will probably burn him. So I have Studio Series Starscream. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a good toy. It has, it's actually inc- it's incredibly fun to transform. Like the transformation is. Stu- super fun stupid fun even you might say and it's nice that when he's in uh jet mode which i won't show off now because i don't want to take time to do it uh you know there's you can still see robot bits on the bottom but it does a fairly good job of hiding it so you know for and uh, yoshi you'll be happy to hear i've had my pr- share of problems with the movie first toys so i'm not a big fan of all of them but this is one that actually has not made me hate it um i'm one of the few people out there who think cogman is a piece of crap i know crazy isn't it 
I finally got my hands on one. What'd you think? No, well, okay. I didn't get my hands on it. I bought one. It's on the way. I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, I- I'll be interested to see what, what you say. Um, let's see. Okay. So, Eric, you have to keep this under wraps because on Wednesday, I have a big reveal that's going to probably make a certain person on RFC cry. Well, this show doesn't go up until Wednesday night. I know, but Eric still needs to be quiet. Um, sure he knows I know. Them. Shut your fucking mouth, Eric. <laughs> So you know how I said it was hard to find Wave 2 of Power of the Primes? I may have found a hunger. <laughs> nice. But you yeah, still need an arm. Well, no, I have I have Ripper Snapper on order at BPTS. So I have the whole set. I just need to ship the arm. So in the nice. the, the two or the, I'm sorry, the three deluxe figures I got, I actually found those at Walmart. So stuff is starting to show up again. So I have a full abominus. I just don't have the arm for him currently. Um, But if you've if you've followed me on Twitter or heard me anywhere else, you know, the fact that I have had this guy on pre-order at at an online retailer for since like almost the beginning of the year. And the distributor doesn't have any to give to them. So the orders have not shipped. And there's a you know, it's not the it's not the online retailer's fault. They're doing everything they can. But, you know, Hasbro really dropped the ball with wave two. You know, Hasbro should really try to con- find a company that's good at distributing toys. <laughs> you think, right? Yeah. It, is Wave 2 the w- wave that has uh, Sludge and Snarl? Yep. I am still missing Dinobot. That, that's that's yep. what I'm missing. The only one I have is Ripper Snapper. No, I got Moonracer, but Ripper Snapper is the only one I found right away out of the Wave 2 Deluxes. Yeah. I now you can look on you can look on Hasbro Toy Shop because they were in stock as of a couple of days ago, Snarl and Slut in Sludge. So there's a chance. I'm still gonna just hold out and hope that Captured Prey gets theirs in because Yeah. They Hasbro should eventually has because Hasbro said they're going to actually re release some of Wave Two. Like they yeah. are going and to I sh- get well, I should that's thank- coming out now. Yeah, and I should thank Melvar from RFC because he's who actually got me Hungar. So he found it in Walmart, I think. So these things should be showing up. Here's hoping. And finally, we talked about it earlier tonight. Uh, I think Yoshi said he had a certain affinity for it. And I did get the trailer for Fans Hobby uh, Scourge. So here it is. Ooh, now, nice. I don't have the Jeff Sr. stickers on it because it doesn't it, it fits better on the Optimus Prime version, which hurts me. Because those stickers are gorgeous. So maybe I'll buy the Optimus Prime version and put stickers on it. I don't know. But Scourge does not need stickers on the the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. So Wait, maybe I'll... do you have the Optimus Prime version of the figure? No, I'd have to get them both. Which oh geez. Maybe. You <laughs> Yeah. But it's it's weird because I, I ordered it as soon as it came out because I was like, I love that fans hobby figure. I want to get the trailer. And then I was like, I ordered a trailer. Do I really want a trailer? And then it came in and I opened the box. I was like, oh, my God, I have a trailer. It's great. So I'm happy. And yeah, that's it. I'm done. All right, we are back from the trips to the store and on to convention news. Uh, just a couple things here in convention news. Just wanted to note that, uh, as Jason mentioned on trips to the store, the Hasbro panel at San Diego Comic-Con is Thursday, July 19th from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. That is Pacific time. So as he mentioned, that is um, 2 p.m. Eastern. Otherwise, uh, figure out your time zone. <laughs> and it is in room 29 AB at at San Diego Comic-Con. And this is the same room, and it's immediately following the IDW Unicron panel. So lots happening that day. Spoiler alert. They're just going to tell you to read Visionaries. <laughs> <laughs> fucking assholes you need to uh, uh in the words of of a disney movie you need to let it go no i'm bitter we had representation go all the way out to seattle and that's what they fucking told us read visionaries i'm bitter okay just a little uh then the next thing we have is um a san diego exclusive this is uh company bait is bringing they do um little vinyl figures and they are collaborating with the Wu Tang clan <laughs> to um do it looks like they're doing an, a Bumblebee and Optimus Prime, a Megatron and a Soundwave in the Wu Tang clan, clan ugh, the Wu Tang clan colors, the the black and gold that they do. 
And I guess they have their little symbol on their, on the figures too. The other day I was in the toilet and I was thinking (laughs) what I really want are small miniature representations of the most popular Transformers characters that were just inspired by Wu-Tang Clan colors. Like I've just always wanted this said a sarcastic asshole. And now you got it. Yeah. So if this interests you, uh, they will be the, the set sells for 30 for a hundred dollars or 30 figures individually. And they'll be available at the bait booth, which is booth number 5645 at San Diego or on at their store on 925th Ave, or 9th, 925th Avenue in New York city <laughs> throughout the event. So they look kind of cool. Well, I just don't want them. <laughs> I, I, I think, but yeah, I mean the Optimus Prime. I mean, we were just talking about the whole black Optimus Primes, and I mean the yellow or the gold on there. You can, yeah, if it, it was works, teal, yeah, it kind of looks like a sound blaster. Way. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a exactly. sound blaster. It's already Prime almost looks like the Grand Scourge. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, um, that is it, and uh, we don't really have feedback this week, so we are going to end the show here. Uh, thank you to Eric and Jason. Uh, Eric, why don't you tell everyone about Steel City Bots and where they can find it? So Steel City Bots, if you could tell from this podcast, I'm a bit younger than everyone else. Uh, Steel City Bots is a show I do that is with people that are around my age. Some are a little younger, some are a little older, but it's basically my generation, our own Transformers podcast. So it's an interesting point of view, I think at least. Uh, to check out, you know, in addition to other podcasts. But you can find that by going anywhere you listen to podcasts, really, or YouTube. Uh, finding Nerdy Geek Chalk, that's our network. I have a couple other shows on there. Steel City Bots is really the one everyone goes there for. So, I mean, if you're looking for it, just Nerdy Geek Talk, and then Steel City Bots is our main show. So, yeah, definitely check that out. I think awesome. it's fucking great. Oh, yeah. It's fun. Yeah. And uh, Jason, tell everyone about Ever- Everlasting Minute, because you know that's the podcast that really the, this show has an overlap with, you know, an audience. Well, that's good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's our minute by minute look at Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And we're about almost two thirds of the way through the movie. So you might want to hop on now or just start listening whenever that doesn't matter. But also... Uh, if you, you go to jasonskirk.com, you can find out about that and all my other podcasts, my social media, my Amazon wish list if you're feeling randy. But I just want to real quick, again, Thursday, if you're listening this Wednesday on Thursday at 2 Eastern Standard Time, we'll be going live at tfradio.net and uh, we'll be talking about uh, the SDCC panel for Hasbro. And we might even mention some stuff about the comic panel if it comes up. But uh, again, Eric will be there with me. Chris from RFC, who knows more about this stuff than <laughs> most people should. And Headmaster Don. So good cast nice. of people come hang out and listen to us talk about Transformers. And eventually there will be more Paladins of Voltron. Sure. Eventually, maybe. <laughs> I mean, eventually the universe is going to explode too. So I know. <laughs> it, things will happen. Tr- try to stay optimistic. Paladins of Voltron will never be a thing. Quit trying to make it a thing. The Paladins of Voltron. The Voltron. <laughs> Fucking soundboards. <laughs> Jesus. In stereo. Look. I, I just i i i want to i want to thank Eric for uh, <laughs> replacing Daryl. Uh, you <laughs> you did a great job, and uh, we're gonna have a giant vote with everybody afterwards to see whether we keep you or not. Uh, so thank you very much, <laughs> <laughs> Jason Kirk. There's like two thirds of you missing, and uh, you're looking good, sir. Thank you for your time. Oh, uh, thank you. We really appreciate you stepping up to the bar here and joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. And uh, I'm really glad I got to meet you at TFCon last year and I got to stroke the beard. It was it was a good moment for me. I I often close my eyes at night and go to sleep with that thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all thank right. you, my friend. Oh, man. Well, and, and as we wrap up, I want to, again, thank all the listeners that uh, Charles and Daryl got to meet at TFCon Toronto and especially the ones that were able to help get Charles on his way when he had to, to run back home. Also a third Sergio for helping Daryl this morning with a lot of pictures and video. It's greatly appreciated and can't wait to see what you, uh, what you recorded. You, you bring up a good point, uh, Jeremy. I want to thank everybody at TFCon that met uh, Charles and Daryl that give us money. Thank you. And, and there was quite a few. So that's right. It's awesome. All right. And with that, uh, thanks everyone for listening. We'll see you guys next time. 
Good night, y'all. Bye, everyone. See ya. Thanks for listening to Transmissions. Remember, you can help support the show by donating to us directly via Patreon or PayPal. Once you become a donor, you will receive access to donor-only goodies, like donor-only contests, listening to us record Transmissions live, and getting Transmissions swag at 20% off. You can find links for this at transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Subscribing to us on Stitcher, iTunes, and Google Play is also a great way to support us here at Transmissions. Every subscription we get helps us get better noticed on those services. Leaving us a comment and five-star review doesn't hurt either. Be sure to come chat with us on Discord. You will find a link for Discord at transmissionspodcast.com slash Discord. And of course, you can always send us an email at feedback at transmissionspodcast.com. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again next week. I just want everyone who's listening to us, especially those of us who are listening to us on the live stream. I love money. (laughs) And thank you. (laughs) Yoshi, what do you think about this guy? The internet just doesn't like you. It really doesn't. Actually, it's Comcast that doesn't like anybody. So without further ado, trips to the store. Unless you're live, as you have to wait for our ado to get everything set up. Yes. And while Jeremy's a doing, I'm going to go a peeing. <laughs> Let's make that two of us. We'll skip hands. We'll hold hands and skip. Woohoo! Let's make that three of us. Ho oh. ho. And the stream dies. God damn it, Eric. I have no idea what just happened. Team Beards. <laughs> yeah, hey, I didn't actually shave the last few days, so I'm, it's coming back. Yeah, I can tell. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs>